Good evening, everybody. If you can let me know in the chat if my sound is all right, but we should be live because I haven't turned off the little live now thing either. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, today is going to be an interesting one. Uh, first of all, I've got some beer. Uh, Robert says the audio is good. Well, that's good to hear. Um, and the camera's working. Uh, the quality of my face cam is a little bit lower because I'm using a different camera today, which is a bit shitter, but hopefully won't break down within five minutes. We'll have to see about that. Um, Rezzy had a doctor's appointment and his eyes were dilated. Not sure if he can even paint. Or, alternatively, if they're still dilated, they should let in more light, which might make you a better painter. You paint in the dark. You'd be like um, Vin Diesel in uh, Perth Pitch Black. So, what I'm working on today is this. Now, hopefully, you can see I've got a yellow box here, and my game is stay in the yellow box. That's the rule. Stay in the yellow box. And then hopefully you can see it. Uh, so if you see me going out of it, you'll have to shout at me. Um, so I've got my fist in here. And my goal is that I'm going to paint it today and on the next stream. And we're going to try and finish it in two streams. So this is going to be a proper speed painting day, this. Um, so watch me cock it up when I panic and try and go too fast. So we're going to start with his face because... Makes sense. I can actually zoom in a little bit, I suppose. This way. So there's his face. Uh, uh, no, it's the damn focus. Might have to do without glasses. Oh dear. Uh, what would be a good red for a bloodthirster that would be proxies as a blood angel armager? Uh, depends on what sort. If you want to go with a richer red, I still really like Flesh Terror's Contrast. I'm going to lean super heavy on Contrast to get this guy done. So, yeah, I'm I'm definitely a fan of those. Um, zoom out a little bit so you can sort of see what I'm doing. Open up the wet palette. So I'm going to start with getting a nice flesh colour down. So I've got basic flesh from scale colour. Uh, Black Templar's force is coming to an end. One Imperial Knight for my birthday on Thursday. And the force is done. Oh, that'd be good for you. Uh, hi, Ariden. Right, uh, we need to rush, don't we? Ow. Uh, hi, Andy. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty good, to be honest, mate. I'm really looking forward to painting with Fiston. But like I say, I'm going to try and do it completely in these two streams. So it's going to be about a four-hour speed paint, this, so we'll see how it goes. The thing with these speed paints is the things that people look at are the weapons and the face. You can get away with being a bit sloppy on the uh, armour or the cloak. Face has got to be pretty good. So we're going to spend a lot of time on this guy's face here, hopefully. Let me know if you can't see what I'm doing. Giving it a couple of quick coats of this basic flesh. Started. Too neat with this. Over all the other bits anyway. Uh, 
while we're at it we're going to do some of his hair as well so i'm going to go silent for a second just while i shake this up Cornwall, Mav, how's the weather been treating you? I've gone with this kind of ochre colour for his hair to start with. I really want it to be quite desaturated, so we're going to build this up to a kind of ivory colour. Working some paint into my brush. This is why I like such massive brushes. Now you can't see the back of his head, so I'm not going to spend too much time worrying about it. Just want to get enough done that if you do look at it at a weird angle, it doesn't look too naff. Um, lions painting grots. Wicked. What sort of grots are you painting? Proper orky grots? Or I've got a snotling Blood Bowl team that I can't wait to paint. I've never played Blood Bowl before. I just bought it because they looked so cute. Now, let's put some more on his face. Uh, <laughs> that's the best kind of uh, fishing, Mav. Uh, although I wouldn't go for Stella. Do you know what? I'm going to break out the nicer brushes for this. Because that one I'm using there is getting a bit worn out. To be fair, had some nice beers, Tony would approve. I always approve of nice beer. So this is my Artist Opus size two. I'm a big fan of using the biggest brush for a part that you can get away with. Uh, VR Corona over Stella. 
three pound for a doom bar. I bet it's got twigs in it as well, Mav. Uh, Dagda's had a couple of delicious crombackers. Oh, it's nice to see you, Dagda. I'm trying to paint the fist in in four hours. Came with a Cornish pasty. That sounds like the best lunch ever. Uh, I need back. So this is a Chimera Black, which is my favourite at the moment because it's super, super, super matte and I love it because of it. And I'm going to take a mega tiny brush. I'm going to do his eyes. I like doing his eyes early on in the job because then when I cock it up, I've not got too much to redo. I've not made the neatest job of that, but it doesn't really matter because all I've got to do is go back over it with the flesh. No mixes or anything to fix. Eight tiny brushes. It's awful, I've done a right shit job of that. Oh, tidy up time. Uh, had a banging fish and chips earlier with a Cornish 8% lager. That sounds like a perfect holiday, Mav. You with the family, mate? Uh, while that dries and I'm ashamed of it, let's get the next colour on the palette. So this is Ivory from Vallejo. I like this paint. It's very smooth and it's a good paint to mix with things. And I'm going to be using it with both the hair and the face to try and blend them together slightly. That's just a little bit more natural than the white. I'm going to take a little bit of this flesh tone. Highlight shade. We're not going to do too many. I'm doing this rather than getting more paints out because, like I say, we're trying to speed paint this. I don't want to spending ages trying to shake up and mix up new paint. Right, let's tidy up where I made a mess of his eyes. I don't like doing OSLIs on things. I know it's not the case, and there are some fantastic OSL uh, painters out there, but I can't help it's used too often to cover up a sloppy paint job. Yeah, I like the plastic plastic as well. I've got a pot of it in here that I've been using to fill in um, resin models. They've got, I've had some really gappy ones. There's about a pot of that stuff in that Thunderhawk. Something better.
start doing some highlights. Push this guy's face quite high. Really want him to have a kind of really unhealthy, pallid look to him. Trying to lean into that kind of vampire aesthetic, the old art. But I'm also trying to bear in mind my light source, which in this case is up and to the right. So I want to push the left. Yeah, his left hand side of his face a little bit harder than I'm going to push the right. And the thing. Um, head's looking like Thunder the Barbarian, oh dear. Uh, even in two scoops. Uh, painting Gretchen using new contrast paint. The runt herd is going to be the prototype for my goth scheme. Reckon I've got a good idea for gnarled leathery orc skin. Let me know what it is, because I've got some orcs that I need to do, and I haven't done any test models yet. I'm looking for a quick way to do them. I'm not a fan of using detail brushes if I can because the dry the paint dries too quickly. I don't know that much working time. I like to really work in the colours. Pretty vampire -y. Right, I need a sort of a pinkish hue to this now, so I'm going to make one up using a tiny bit of contrast paint. Um, I have Mephiston built, minus the head. How heretical would it be to put a Phobos Librarian head on it? I like my whole army to protect their heads. Not really. Um, there's no reason that you wouldn't occasionally wear a helmet. a slightly pinker tone that's just going to be for this guy's doing his lower lip with it i want to get in there and just do that tongue self Right, let's get his fangs done now. 
So I'm just taking a nice white. This is uh, Ammo by Mig white. It's not my favourite white, but it's very runny. And it goes on very smooth. So if I'm trying to do real detail like this, it's quite nice. You see how easily it just comes out of the bottle. And I only need a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. In this case, the really thin paint is going to play to my advantage here. Nope. Brush has got an errant hair. Really irritating me. Annoying me so much that the scalpel was coming out. Right, it's a bit rough and ready, but that will do us for his face. Start working on that hair. So we're going to go back to that ochre colour. And I'm going to work in a bit of this ivory. Build a bit of texture into this. Not being super neat. Also, don't want to have anything look too plasticky. So, little short tufts is what I'm doing in the highlighting, rather than the whole thing. Um, not enough vampire stuff these days in the law. No, they seem to try to move away from it, which is sad. Your Grotz mission series is really cool. Cheers, Stephen. Um, we thought it'd be good to do like a quick reference for each of the missions. Rather than doing one big video like we normally do, we did them all as separate ones so that if you're about to go into a game or at a tournament, you know what you're going to play or something, you can just look up the mission and have a little reminder on it. That was kind of the idea. Ivory in there. Uh, not what I call quick, but here's my recipe: base coat, death world, forest wash, uh, Athonian camo shade, layer death world forest, highlight Elysian green, highlight Ogryn camo, wash three to one contrast medium and Naz drag yellow. Still experiment with the consistency of the final wash and where to apply the Ogryn camo for best results. Painted some gut rippers with it so far; they look swampy. Cool. Uh, I'll give it a go. I'm a bit funny in that I really rarely use washes. Um, I don't like not being able to control it. So if I do, they're often um, oils. I just feel like I can take it off a bit easier if I don't like it.
down there. Tend to prefer a paint where you can see how I'm painting. This is quintessentially how I paint things. I'll start the inside and work out. Right, so we're going to leave that for now and we're going to start work on um, his body, wherever I've put that. There it is. Um, what was that? More orcs. Yeah, something like that. That's it. Um, right, okay, so. Um, don't need the wet palette for now, so I'll put this aside. Definitely prefer using contrast or thin paint for shading, but haven't found a good substitute for the camo shade. No, like I say, I haven't practiced it yet, but when I do, I will let you know what I find. Right, um, so for this, we can actually use some contrast paint. Talking of that, like I say, I want to try and do them in four hours, so I'm not going to mess about too much building up layers. But I also don't want this contrast paint doing that contrast thing, which sounds a bit bizarre. But I don't really want it to pull, so to stop that, I'm actually going to make a mix of contrast paint and acrylic medium thinner. So that is some um, Blood Angels Red. And I'm going to put a couple of drops of this acrylic thinner in there just to stop it clumping up too much. Gotta stop tasting things. The answer is it tastes awful. Uh, here's my size two. not too worried about being neat with this because uh, a lot of the detailing I'm going to repaint over anyway. Um, finally subscribed to Warhammer Plus. Loved Angel's Death. Yeah, I enjoyed Angel's Death. It was good. Um, my favourite thing about it, to be honest, is the vault because I'm a sucker for all those old Imperial Armour books and things. Uh, I used to have them all and I sold them years ago and I'm really glad to be able to read them again because the fluff is fantastic. Take the mick out of the back nipples on the um, channel art, but Mephiston's got some serious nippleage going on. More important at the moment that I don't leave any white showing and I'm super neat. Downside to magnetic holder is it attracts your power.
let me know if I start to go out of focus or if I start to drift off the screen. Because I have a habit when I'm painting of getting closer and closer to the model. Then I'll block out and you won't, you won't be able to see anything. Right, now we do the same thing with the cloak. But the Masterclass Painting Series has had good tips too. Yeah, I quite like it actually. I was a bit sceptical if I'm honest, and I thought it was going to be a bit... Because GW do have a habit of using way too many paints in the hope that they'll sell you some more. But actually, they're pretty good. Well, that's out of focus, that. Huh? So I can get to. F oh, stop focusing on that. Focus on me. Yeah, the YouTube videos, they make seem more geared to general painters and beginners. Yeah, absolutely. And I was worried the masterclass was going to be the same, but it's really not. I've done some good stuff on that. So this is Flesh Terrors, and I've made a really thin mix of this. Because what I don't want is it pooling. I'd rather do multiple coats than have a horrible pooly mess. So I've thinned it really heavily. I'm just making sure it doesn't sit. Anywhere, especially on that bottom, you can see it keeps trying to settle there. not a fan of sub assemblies sometimes it is a little annoying like getting behind these uh, syringes It'd be a lot easier if i was in sub assemblies but overall i just don't think it saves me enough extra time over the hassle of tidying up where the joins were Because I always paint from the inside out, it's not that big a deal. Because I'm going to have to paint these things anyway. Settle. Lifting off the screen again. Uh, masterclass series are rather advanced you need to know the basics yeah you do absolutely too much on there but because i use the um Thinner, I've got the extended working time, it just means I can keep going in there and moving it around so it doesn't fall anywhere too much. This is just a clean brush now, picking off any poles.
moving it where I do want it. Right, now the chest armor's done, so we can put another coat in there. That's my slightly smaller brush. And while that's drying, stand up. This guy's only got one foot, which is a really weird model. It's annoying making him stay on the stand. So I've been having a good time with this new uh, Bal Red contrast paint. This stuff's great. And I'm going to use this in exactly the same way as we've used the other ones, but I don't need quite as much. I'm only going to make a tiny amount up. So, are any of you guys painting tonight, or is it just me? I, uh, I know Lion's still working on his orcs. Uh, two scoops. So far I've gotten Legion Black and Iron Jaws Yellow from the new contrast line. I like them both. Yeah, good. I haven't tried them all yet. This red's great. Really, really vivid. doesn't do that contrast thing very much though which for me is a benefit because I don't want it to but I can see if you want to use it like a traditional contrast paint it wouldn't work so much it's almost like an ink in fact I was using it to replace an ink through the airbrush earlier I was blown away by how well it worked for it Um, I'm working on six Bearmoth Tyranid Warriors. Oh, that's a lot of ones. It's a big old batch. Um, painting something I have to do. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I do it to chill out and relax. Uh, I've noticed I'm out of focus again. 
Um, love Black Legion as well. One to one mix with Black Templar has been awesome. I haven't tried that yet. Uh, two scoops, I'm at work now, but I'll be painting Death Company later. Nice. Uh, whatever speeds that process up, I'm all over it. Yeah, that's why I'm all over this paint, to be honest. Because it just speeds up the process. Going to pick up Iron Jaws 2 for some yellow helmets. Bar red seems like a glaze. Yeah, it is a little bit. This is a little bit thin, though, if you're wondering how, how it's acting. Um, I have thinned it down just a touch. I was a huge fan of those. Oh, uh, they brought back some of the old cancel glaze line. Yeah, I've got a couple. I've been hoarding them because they, since they stopped making them and you can't get them anymore. Um, good friend of mine has his own channel on YouTube called Mediocre Hobbies. Has some great tutorials. Cool. I'll have to check it out. Uh, I can recommend Iron Jaws for Helmets, Stephen S. I got it, so I got it too. Cool. Seems like it's just dark enough to be able to highlight with a brighter yellow as well. Uh, I fight painting, much prefer building stuff. If I was a millionaire, I'd pay someone else to do the painting. Uh, yeah, I can see why people do, to be honest. It's not for me. I, I enjoy painting too much. For me, the painting is a lot of the fun. But I, I, I do know that a lot of people don't feel that way. I don't need to be too neat with this, luckily. All the areas next to it are going to be um, painted a bit more traditionally. Taking very time. Something else. Let's start working on this cloak, shall we? That's the wet palette. Uh. Evening, Daniel. Uh, Stephen S loves painting too, and after my own heart. Um, I think I'm overly critical of my own work and it stresses me, so the vicious circle continues. It's easy to get into that, and I'm just as guilty as other people sometimes. Um, and it was actually somebody else that convinced me to start putting a deadline on things. Because what would happen was, I'd be convinced that every model I did had to be the absolute best model I could do. I just meant that nothing was ever getting finished and I was never happy with anything. So by setting sort of hard deadlines on everything, and this doesn't work for everybody, it just means that I sort of learned to be happy with where I can get to in an amount of time.
Uh, do you have a list already planned out from Mephisto? No, not at all. Um, I'm just painting him because he's cool. I'm sure he'll see some tabletop time. But really, I'm painting him purely because I can. This is now really thin, this black. Because I just want to build it up. A really nice, smooth black in there. And again, I'm not worried about having to do multiple coats. Uh, only played about 12 months now, but collected painted for years. Um, I think, especially with like the BAC channel and that, a lot of people get really kind of um, very into the competitive idea of 40k. But that's not the whole hobby at all. And there's a lot of people that are much more interested in painting, modelling, making cool armies and that sort of thing. Um... And when you look at the numbers, there's probably more people into that than there are into actually gaming, competitive gaming as well. So you're probably in the majority rather than minority with that sort of thing. Which I know sounds a bit crazy. Cool idea, T. Going to take that on board. Good. Glad to hear. Uh, totally, totally. Speed paint away. It teaches you how to do a good job in a little time. Then when you do slow down, you realise just how good you can be, lol. <laughs> yeah, cheers, Stephen. Uh, working on the same model, but as an Astarath conversion with original head, skull, shoulder pad and jump pack. Oh, that could look cool. Maybe it might be in the minority, but actually, apart from the fact he's a bit small because it's an old model, I really like the Astarath model. still think he looks really cool. Yeah, don't get me wrong, he could definitely do with being Primarist, uh, just for scale reasons, but it's still, the, the look of the model I think still holds up.
Fair enough. Original model is cool, Defo. Uh, is that Mephiston for you? Um, yeah, basically. Um, he's been sitting on my to-do list, but because he's a bit rubbish in game, he's something that suffers from that. I'm, I know a lot of people are guilty of this because he hasn't been that good. He doesn't get painted, but I wanted something. Basically, I wanted something to paint on stream that would be fun and would be a bit smaller because the um, the Thunderhawk is a bloody nightmare to paint on stream because it's so large that I can't get it like even vaguely in focus for any length of time. So if there's anything anybody actually wants to see me paint on stream, if you can let me know, I'll, if I've got one available, I'll paint it. I'm certainly not against painting random stuff for the sake of it. All right, I need some more paint. Hang on. Is that what your tape's window on the cutting mat is to help you keep it in frame? It's exactly that. Um, I've also got a sign here, which you can't see because of the way the cameras are, but um, it says, keep the damn model in the box. Because otherwise I have a habit of doing this. And then you can't see anything. Uh, you could paint Astrath on stream, then maybe I'll be inspired to paint mine. <laughs> maybe. Um, cheers, Dagda. Uh, any Graves Armoury? Gravis. Ah, okay. Gravis unit. Uh, maybe Gravis Captain. Uh, I haven't got the new one. I've got the old one somewhere. I could paint him up. Certainly.
Uh, I finished a Primaris Sanguinary Ancient yesterday. Hope to post a pic in Discord soon. That would look cool. Um, the thing is, I love Ancients. I think they look so cool. They're just so rubbish. Um, and I do think we get carried away sometimes with well, it's like only painting things that are good. I know I'm guilty of it. I absolutely love this model. I've been waiting to paint him for ages. So even though it is a speed paint, this is a labour of love. I'm painting it because I love the model. And that is the sole reason. Camera focus is off by a few inches. Doesn't like focusing this close. It's a bit better. I have to start manually focusing this. Yeah, it is. Uh, I focus it off the grid pattern, then it jumps back on it. I might start using a smooth mat. I'll say, let's give that a go. Let me put something smooth down and see if it makes a difference. Or vaguely smooth. Oh, it doesn't like that. Doesn't like that at all, it can't cope with the colour. No, nope. back to the map. Uh New contrast has been hit and miss, but Bar Red has won the winners. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Um, if I get a chance, I'm going to make a video because I've been playing about with it to do the um, try and speed up my infantry painting process. And I think that I've got a new recipe using that Bar Red that I'm really chuffed with. Because it's so fast, I think it gets a really nice, bright finish. I'm going to have to switch to a smaller brush here. I think you compete with Mephiston Red for best UW Red. No, I don't even own any Mephiston Red, which is ironic as I'm painting Mephiston Red.
probably do own some, I just don't use it. Um, Stephen S, I need to pick up Bar Red. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, I was experimenting with it earlier. Hang on, I'll show you actually. Um, so this is a Sikaran that I was painting. Now, I used a red ink on the Thunderhawk to speed up the process, and I've run out because I used so much of it, and I couldn't get it because it was out of stock, and I used Bar Red instead, and I really like the way it went through. My favourite red is one-to-one -one Blood Angels Red Flesh Terrors over Wraithbone. Yeah, I can see that looking nice. Slightly working blacking in and blocking in all these details. Black ink or black paint. This part of the job is slow, but I think it will make it a lot easier to see what we're working on. Bit difficult doing this under the camera because I've got my I'm a bit set in my ways with how I set up my desk I just can't do that with the camera here so like normally the wet palette would be over here and I wouldn't really need to think about it message um blood angels red is just too pale in my opinion uh it can be i mean that chest area is blood angels red um yeah i doesn't fully cover no it doesn't uh what ink was it it was ink tense crimson is what i generally use uh but like i say i used it all up so I was using the bowl red. Uh, I apply a thick coat, then clean it up before it dries. Yeah, that's what I'm basically doing here. Uh, hi, Foz. Just barbecuing. Oh, I'd love a barbecue. Love a bit of barbecue. Right, this cloak is actually dry, so I'm going to give it another coat. My super thin black. So this is just Chimera paint, which is ultra matte anyway. And I've thinned it down with some acrylic thinner. By a lot. So I can make a really smooth matte base coat for this cloak. Just 
Right, so I missed a bit of that backpack as well. Now I've actually blue tacked that on there so I can take it off. Kudos for you and Mark for coming up with some solid solo content lately, in addition to the new mission contents with three of you. Ah, oh, cheers, Foz. Uh, I don't know if you realise, but um, John's actually on holiday at the moment. So we're trying to make lots of little bits to kind of fill in the blanks. So a lot of the stuff you're going to be seeing on BAC is uh, pre-recorded stuff that he's made over the last few weeks. And then while we were at it, we started making a bit of a bank because hopefully I'm supposed to be moving house in the next few weeks as well, which means that I'm going to be out of it for a little while till I can get the internet and everything sorted. You know how these things are like. Um, and then there should be hopefully no major delays in content. I'm trying to build up a little bit of a bank of stuff. Uh, I'm working on a how to paint yellow quickly video at the moment. Um, and it's taken a bit, ironically, the painting yellow quickly video has taken a little bit of time because I'm trying to do it quickly without any uh, airbrush or, um, so I use heavily other stuff. So I've got all sorts of brands of paint and tools and all sorts, but I am aware that a lot of people like to stick within the kind of GW ecosystem. So it's trying to get a nice yellow just using GW products. Uh, and also no airbrush or anything because getting a nice yellow with an airbrush is not too difficult. Getting a nice yellow without an airbrush is a bit more of a faff. Little brush again. The new yellow contrasts look decent. Yes, they are. Um... I've got the Imperial Fist here, which is what I'm using as part of my painting yellow video. But if you just use the contrast yellow, what you get is a very flat colour, and that's not very interesting to look at. Need to drink my beer, it's getting warm. Uh, hi Dirty Wizard, uh, I'm doing well mate. I'm trying to speed paint the fiston. I'm going to finish him in two streams is my goal. And then I'm going to take the piss out of John. It takes him forever to do anything. Although I'm falling into the same traps that he does sometimes. The only exception is I will varnish this off camera because I need to use the airbrush for that and it's a pain with the compressor it makes a racket.
Um, nice I look forward to it. Uh, I missed your beer selection if you shared that earlier. Uh, today I am drinking. Uh, if it'll focus, this is Beaver Town Lunar Haze. I quite like the Beaver Town beers, although I am a little bit disappointed that they've been sold to Heineken. Um, what's your plan for the sword? Now, I'm not going to do it like they do on the box art. I'm going to go classic blue. Because I like blue power weapons. I think they look cool. So I'm going to do a, a little bit of blending on it. I'm not going to spend hours. I'll just do a kind of blue to light blue on a power sword effect. Uh, I'm terrified to start my Sanguinius model in case I screw it up. Thing is that it's just paint. And he is a very expensive model, absolutely. But you can always take paint off again. And I've definitely realised when I've got to a certain point, no, 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 this is unrecoverable. And I've stripped it. But often, if you're using thin paint, you can uh, just paint over it. I've even prime over it. I've done that before. You might think I'm mental painting this um, wing blood drop black when it's going to be white. But it just helps me visualise all the areas and uh, get a little bit of separation going on. And it's not too difficult to paint uh, white over black. I know it sounds mad, but white's got great coverage. That's a lot easier to paint the white over the black than it would be to paint the red over the black, which is why I've done the red already, or done some red already. I'll tidy it up in a bit. Up. Made a mess. Uh. I'm sure it'll come out well, Coates. Oh, yep. Uh, have you watched the short vids by Warrior Tear? They are ace. I've not heard of them. I'm sorry. Um, two scoops. Oh, that looks like my kind of beer. Yeah, I like this. It's, it's a craft, and I like it. You can always get it commission painted, Dirty Wizard, after you've cocked it up. Had no chance of getting golden digging ticket on the first. Try again on the eighth. The owls are the same. I tried but failed to get a Golden Demon ticket. Um, I know Mark keeps talking about entering. I'm not entering it. I'm not good enough. 
but I would have liked to go Good. Put it in there that mark it up. Right, I'm pleased with that. Let's see what the messages are. Uh, <laughs> um, looks like John's hopped on on free grots and on himself now. Uh, you haven't painted Palmaris and Festum before. I have, but never for myself, John. I've got a good deal on the Blood Angel starter box. Going to make five man infiltrator squad, basic intercessors. Currently only have assaults and incursors. That's looking pretty solid, actually. Bump up the saturation a little bit. Like this big brush. This is back to the thinned flesh terrors red. If I can get all the base coats done today, I'm going to be a happy man. My goal. Some paint on every part of the model that's not undercoat. Uh... Went to my mates earlier to see his latest work. He's done a Ghostbuster style proton energy beam that did power weapons. And they look so cool. I'll post pics on Discord tomorrow. Oh, I look forward to seeing that. Uh, I had such a hard time putting my fist in together, especially on his right leg. Just could not get it to fix. It's a weird, weird location. Um, also, he looks like kicking a dog now. Um, hmm. 
<laughs> Burning it will bite, Steve. Can't get it to the stand now. Oh dear. Uh, I don't know what to suggest there. Maybe make a custom base for it. It's really weird. And the, the first time I looked at this, I was very confused by the fact that he only has one leg. And I, I really can't get my head around the fact that the Fiston's only got one leg. It's probably one of the only models that I've ever seen where they've done that. Just his cloak is attached to a foot. And actually, if you turn the model upside down, even when he's assembled, you can see he's not got anything up there. There's nothing up his skirt. He's missing a leg. He's just got a foot hanging onto the bottom of his coat. Uh, GW listen to your rants on not painting underside of tanks. Nobody sees it anyway. Yeah, you see this Sakaran? There's my Sakaran. Uh, it's looking all right. Black. Don't flip Sakarans over and don't flip Mephiston over either because he's naked under there. Not to worry about this backpack because I know it looks terrible at the moment, but all of this bit you can't see anyway. Stick that. Another stand. Uh, <laughs> Steve S. Uh, I stopped painting the undersides not too, man. It's just, what's the point? What is the point? Spend the time on the bits people are going to look at. Bases and weapons, that's where you put your time in.
I reckon I ingest about as much paint as I put on the model. That for now. Then for time. Oh, not too bad. Right, I'm happy with the way that that's going. While that's drying, let's start making a go at the sword. So I'm going to start with some navy blue just to get a base coat down. Back to the big brush. Curious to see your quick power sword recipe. All right, well, you're about to see it. It starts off with getting a nice coat of navy blue. I'm not worrying about those little power nodules or anything. I'll pick those out once the blade's done. Get to do the back. All anywhere, so just drag it around a little bit. Right, while well, that's drying, get the next colour, which is this kind of more mid blue.
It's taking too long, so I'm gonna have to get the hairdryer on that. Turn the sound off for a second. Right. Too much of this on it. I'm going to choose the areas that I want to have light. Middle set. Here. Yeah. Now this paint is super thin, so it takes a lot of coats. And this it works out for our benefit. Go with an even paler blue. Throw your paintbrush on the floor. Start reinforcing to be honest. And fancy with it. The trick is to make sure that the opposites there uh, because you want to push that contrast as much as you can.
not going crazy here. We're not going to try and spend ages blending it all. Got to get a nice bit of interest into it. In the lightest blue. Uh, evening to Zab. Um, it is a little bit practice, but it's also about a plan. So I know it might seem a bit mental, but actually, before I started this model, I sat down and I worked out how I was going to do each section. Because I've got four hours to finish my fist in here, which means that I can't afford be sitting there going oh what do i need to paint next what do I, should i go with this color or this color because i just don't have time so i sat down and i spent 10 minutes or so just planning out how i was going to do it and that saves me loads of time later on um, and the other thing that I recommend is a deadline. If you're anything like me, if you've got unlimited amounts of time, you'll use unlimited amounts of time. The other thing is concentrate on the things that make the biggest difference. So faces and weapons. Now people aren't really interested in what your shoes look like. In fact on this model I've literally skipped it. I haven't bothered because you can't see it the cloaks in the way. So uh, there is a foot on the uh, base that I'll do. Is that sticking out? But the one under his cloak, there's no way you're going to be able to see it. So I'm just not going to worry about it.
Concentrate on the things that make the difference. So people will notice if I do a shoddy job on the sword. But they're not going to notice about the fact that there's a little bit of bleed in the colour on the inside of that cloak over there. Now it's different if you're trying to win a golden demon because then every aspect of your model has to be perfect. But if you're painting for tabletop or painting for fun or painting for your mates or whatever, the chances are, unless you point it out to them, they are not going to know. If you've been watching the whole stream, you'll notice that I've probably spent more time on this sword and on his face than I have on the rest of the model. Just as I cock it up a bit. And there we go, that'll do for his sword. Not the most stunning thing ever, but it will do the job. Tidying up the uh, the pommel on that at the moment. You'll note I haven't done the back of the sword, and that's because unless you're holding it at a really weird angle, you can't see it. And it's that whole don't paint things people can't see. It's one of the reasons I don't worry too much about too many sub-assemblies. I mean, all right, I've left the backpack off and I've left his head off. But other than that, because if you can't get to it, you probably can't see it. Which I know is a bit lazy. I think it works. All right, let's put him down for a second. And it reminded me that I need to do his foot. So his foot is actually on the base here. So this is just back to that new bar red contrast paint with a bit thinner in it. Absolutely in love with this paint. Nice. Right. 
starting to look alright. Let's start working on this cloak and bringing up a bit of colour in it. Uh, now I want a kind of a really dark bluish grey. Yeah, you should, Stephen. It's a great paint. This is a abyssal blue. Scale 75. And it's a really dark grey blue. But on the camera it probably looks near enough black. And the reason for this is matte black just looks a bit boring. So I'm going to do the top of his cloak with this really thin coat of it just to add a little bit of interest to it. This is super thin. I'm going to paint the whole thing apart from the deepest recesses with it. This will still read largely as black. It'll just make it a little bit more interesting to look at. And it'll mean that the darker sh folds of the cloak actually look even blacker. Because weirdly matte black doesn't look as dark as something like um, a, a satin or a gloss black. Yeah, it's very much like the old blood red colour. Very much. Right, I've run out of beer, so I need to pour myself another one. How are we doing for time? Ah, six minutes. More or less. No, oh, ten minutes. Right, more beer. Now we can carry on. Uh, I need to give that a quick dry, so I've got another. Let's put another layer, layer of paint on that. You're playing along with Citadel paints. Incubi Darkness can work quite well for this. Maybe mix in a little bit of black with it. Remember with a cloth, uh, often the light actually falls into the fold. So the depth of the fold are not necessarily any darker, uh, sorry, any lighter or darker than the flat.
bring in a little bit of this Arctic blue colour. Jump that. Okay, and I want this to read as black, so I'm not going to go too big on the highlights. A couple of really subtle ones in. I don't want to spend too much time because this is the back of the model and like we said earlier people aren't going to look at the back of the model just doing a couple of stages of highlight And that together. There you go, that'll do for the cloak. I'll take that. Let's do some work on the handle of his sword. We're using a GW paint here. This is Barrett Nar Burgundy. Couple of coats. Me eighties movies. Did you see Top Gun yet? Uh, yes, the the new one. I take it you mean. Yeah, I have. I liked it. I thought it was a great film. more on the wet palette. Way too much. Will be annoying at all. Well, I like the blue sponge. some of my paints are starting to dry a little bit on the palette which means it's
Right, how am I doing for time? Right, okay, so um, I've got about a minute left of my two hour deadline for today. We've gotten all right. We've gotten a lot of it blocked out. We've done the cloak. I'm relatively happy with where the red's sitting. The sword's looking okay. Just needs a bit of detailing on it. We've got the backpack readied, but obviously we haven't got any detail on that yet. Um, we did his foot. And we did his face, which I think looks all right. I don't know if the camera's going to be able to focus on that one, but I'll take some pictures when he's done. So that's where we've got to today. So thank you very much for joining me and keeping me company while I try and blitz a Mephiston. Uh, hopefully you'll join me. We will be streaming again next Tuesday. Uh, we're potentially going to stream again on Saturday as John's on his holidays. And uh, I'm going to steal his slot to do a quick stream in then as well. So hopefully we'll see you all on the next one. Uh, thanks for watching. Cheers, guys. Good night. Good night, all.